Hello, and welcome to the Johnny Tripod Happy Hour. I'm your host, Johnny Tripod, and you're listening to KTLC, the Lost Church Free Radio. Tune in Wednesdays to hear an episode of mine at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, and every first Wednesday, you'll get a new episode. So for this month, I want to pick up where I left off last month uh, with some of my favorite uh, female vocalists. Um, So I'm calling this Favorite Female Vocalists Part 2. And we're going to start right in with the Pride of Petaluma, Tsunami Bomb, with their lead vocalist, Agent M. This is Take the Reins.
And of course, that was The Breeders uh, with the song Divine Hammer from their album Last Splash, which I think was 93. Huge, huge album, um, which must have, you know, burned Black Francis's butt for Kim Deal to, to leave uh, uh, the Pixies or just go into her next project um, and have as, you know, huge success with it. Far more than the Pixies ever did in their in their day, um, but yeah, a fun song, upbeat, nice that it's about sex, nice that it's about orgasm. Um, so that's why I like it so much. Uh, before that, you had Sonic Youth uh, featuring uh, on lead vocals um, uh, Kim Gordon. Uh, that was the song "Kissability." That was a live a live version um, of that song. Um, I always liked it when, when Kim Gordon sang on the Sonic Youth songs. Um, she maybe sang on maybe a quarter of them, if even that. Um, but always a nice break from, from most of the, the, the Thurston Moore stuff. Um, that's a good one because it's so, it's, it's urgent. I don't know, there's something especially good about that song. And that's a good live version. Um, the band is really noisy. Um, but you know she grounds it in what she's saying um so i I always like kissability and then before that um we had tsunami bomb uh with their song take the reins uh from the album uh, ultimate escape um that's agent m on a vocal so i love love tsunami bomb as i said i call them the pride of petaluma uh uh, town in uh, marin county to the north of san francisco so my friends uh, Dennis and Carrie turned me on to their first album, which was called, um, what was it called? Oh, oh the, the Creature From Within or something, um, which had a great song called Lemonade, but it was, um, uh, it was not nearly as well produced. It was uh, much more of a DIY kind of thing, um, but totally like that. And it was like a six song EP. So it's like, oh, what's the next going, you know, what's it going to be? Is it going to sound the same? And then they kind of unleashed kind of in my mind, kind of a mini masterpiece. It's, uh, it's great. It's, it, you know, it's great. Um, punk pop, basically huge amounts of guitars. Um, you know, but she's got that, you know, strident, you know, um, you know, tone to her very, uh, projects a lot. Um, um, and it's just so good. Yeah, I just really love that album. So that's the uh, that's the opening track to that album. So uh, that's why I picked that one. Moving right along, we have the band X Hex, led by Mary Timoney, and their song "You Fell Apart." <laughs>
That was Michaela Ann with her song One Heart from her 2019 album Lonesome Dove. Um, managed to catch her at a really tiny little bar with a sort of a basement performance space um, here in San Francisco, just around the block called the Mottos. Um, and then some friends were there as well, which is a nice surprise. Um, and um, yeah, uh, as you can probably tell, she uh, she really resonates, especially with more um, um, intimate spaces like that. She she had a whole band. She had a full band. Um, and this is the song that I really wanted to hear because it was, I don't even know how I felt. Oh, I know what it was. It was once again that Saving Country Music um, website that tuned me in on her when her album was released. Um, so it's like, man, I really like that song. And so I was waiting for her to play that one. And she, you know, she just, she just didn't disappoint. Um, and she's very uh, personable. I talked to her after the show where she was selling merch, of course. Um, yeah, really, really nice. Um, I really liked it and I liked her. So that was a good show. That was a nice surprise and was the last show I saw, uh, before the, um, everything shut down for the pandemic. So that was, I hadn't. Uh, had managed to see a lot of shows for a while until things have opened up a little bit. Um, but she was my uh, pre-pandemic last show that I saw. So that's Michaela Ann. I recommend her um, that album, uh, Lonesome Dove. There's a lot of really good songs on it. Um, and right before that, uh, we had um, X with their song Some Other Time um, from the album Wild Gift from 1981. Um so, of course, that's Xene Cervenka um, on vocals there. Um, one half of the the vocal duo of her and um, John Doe. Um, probably my favorite band, you know, outside of the Beatles um, of all time. Um, you know, just love X. And they are just absolutely still going. They are just playing show after show after show. And sometimes um, releasing new music. Um, and we saw them, they probably, I think I mentioned this before, for my birthday, maybe three or four years ago, out at the Independent, out in uh, the Western Ed Edition here in San Francisco. And uh, it was just a great show. It was really, it was excellent. And they're, you know, whatever, they're in their 60s. <laughs> but totally bringing it. It was, it's really fun. So um, she, um, John Doe sings a lot of lead vocals as well. So I wanted to pull out an Xene song. And that's one of my favorite. Um, um, uh, she does, they do a lot of harmonies together or a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, uh, duo singing. Um, she doesn't sing a huge amount on her own like this one. So I wanted to kind of, um, show her voice of what she can do. And I, I thought that one, um, um, uh, showed that voice pretty well. So that was, uh, some other time. And right before that we had, um, X Hex with their song, You Fell Apart. And that was Mary Timoney um, on the uh, vocals and um, guitar. Um, and um, what can I say about that? So Mary Timoney, I know from uh, from the band Helium, which is one of those 90s bands um, that you either knew or you didn't. Um, uh, so, you know, kind of knew that, um, was it Magic City album? And then uh, the the dirt uh, something ah anyway I should look up this stuff before I actually make a an episode um, so always been aware of Mary Timoney and then she ended up um, doing some uh, uh, um, um, projects with some other bands uh, like um, um, Wild Flag with uh, Carrie Brownstein from um, uh, Slater Kinney um, but when she put together this band X Hex um, and the, and their debut album um, Rips uh, is just kind of this uh, pop rock masterpiece. So many, so many catchy, great songs, and uh, of course she's an uh, an excellent guitar player. And uh, we went and saw them um, at least for that first time at um, the rickshaw stop here in San Francisco, and it was just it was just a blowout. It was just like they were they were just so damn good, like this power trio, and it was. Um, it was just phenomenal. It was just so fun to see. Um, so I definitely wanted to get Mary Mary Timoney um, out onto this uh, this uh, episode tonight because I'm such a big fan. 
You're listening to the Johnny Tripod Happy Hour. I'm your host, Johnny Tripod. Uh, you're listening to KTLC, the Lost Church Free Radio. Next up, we have the Beths with Elizabeth Stokes on vocals and uh, guitar and their song, Dying to Believe. Such a fragile thing to try to support the weight of It's not that I don't think that my point of view is valid It's just that I can't stand the sound of my own patterns We always look backwards from the way that I imagine
And that was Belly, led by uh, Tanya Donnelly, and their song Super Connected from their second album, King, from 1995. So I've been a Tanya Donnelly fan for, for a long time since um, I started listening to Throwing Muses uh, later in the 80s. I think it was 87. Someone introduced me to them. And of course, hugely, I was a pivotal, pivotal band with her half-sister, uh, Kirsten Hirsch. So a huge Throwing Muses fan. And when then Tanya Donnelly left the band, um, she was already in the um, Breeders for a little bit. Um, then she started Belly. And of course, they had the huge, huge album, uh, Star, that came out and propelled her to fame, <laughs> basically. And um, But their second album, King Me, had a lot of good songs on it. And this is one of my favorite, uh, Super Connected. But I always, I always felt like it suffered from not very good production it's just not very big sounding it's kind of uneven which i thought was a shame so they never quite reached their heights that they did with star um um but still uh, a, a good album with with good songs and before that we had uh, something bigger something brighter from um the band uh pretty girls make graves um that was from their album, uh, their 2003 album, uh, The New Romance. Um, uh, the, the singer in that band is uh, Andrea Zolo. Um, yeah, um, so that's another Seattle band, um, Pretty Girls Make Grays, and it kind of came out of uh, several other bands, uh, notably the, the rhythm section from um, Murder City Devils. And they formed that right before, right before that band disbanded, and then um, when it blew up for good, uh, Pretty Girls Make Grays kind of become the the, the main main um, uh, band for those those folks. And uh, I saw them once. I don't remember what it was in Seattle, but uh, Andrea Zola was just great. She'd kind of like prowl the stage, and you know, just a force to be reckoned with. Um, uh, and I know they're known, but I just don't think they're nearly as widely known as they should be. Um, uh, just an excellent, excellent band. So I would recommend at least checking out uh, The New Romance and see what you think. Interesting um, guitar interplay. Um, yeah, not, not your straightforward uh, rock guitar sound at all. Um, so a fan. So check it out. And um, opening up that set, we had uh, uh, The Beths with their song Dying to Believe. Uh, from their second full length, uh, Jump Rope Grazer, Gazers, uh, 2020. So Elizabeth Stokes is the lead singer in that band and plays guitar. Um, yeah, just uh, they're just like a hit making machine <laughs> of great pop gems, and they're so fun to play uh, to see live because well they're from New Zealand and so they are adorable and they they sound adorable and they introduce each other on stage in a in our little round every single time it is just they are they are absolutely delightful um yeah so check out the Beths um I, I recommend them uh, they have a new album coming out in September we've only heard the uh uh the first album or sorry the first uh, single from that um, I think silence is golden. So looking forward to that. And hopefully they can get back to the States and we'll, uh, we'll catch them again. Well, not much time. So let's get in some Liz Fair with her song Whip Smart.
when they do the double dutch that's them dancing when they do the double dutch that's them dancing when they do the double dutch that's them dancing when they do the double dutch that's them dancing when they do the double dutch that's them dancing when they do the double dutch that's them dancing when they do the double dutch that's them When they do the double dutch, that's them dancing. Sing, 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 sing. P.J. Harvey with Dylan's uh, Highway 61 Revisited. Uh, That was on a Rid of Me album um, from 1992. I think that's just a great cover. It comes comes in, you know, all that quiet and then just kind of hits you hard. And it's so syncopated. It's so odd. I don't really, (laughs) I'm not a huge Dylan fan, so I don't really know what the original like is like. I should probably just go back and listen to it. But her version, I just think, is just so crazy and good on an album full of a lot of really good songs. Um, and before that, we had a Liz Fair um, with her song Whip Smart, uh, which was from the album Whip Smart in 94, um, coming after the massive breakthrough of Exile and Guyville um, the year before, which obviously just um, being a debut album and being hugely successful put her on the map for the rest of her uh, career and her life. Um, but yeah, I like Whip Smart. Just it's so, it's so catchy and so funny. 
Um, and I wanted to just play something not off of not off of the first album that I hear all the time. Um, great sound on drums for sure. Um, yeah, that was that mini set. Um, so you've been listening to the Johnny Tripod Happy Hour. This is me, Johnny Tripod. <laughs> You're listening to uh, KTLC, the Lost Church Free Radio at www.thelostchurch.com slash radio. <laughs> I am so bad at getting prepared these days. Um, but yeah, check it out. Um, we have stuff playing all the time. I have episodes every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and the first Wednesday of the month, uh, there's a new episode. Um, so tune in and, and I hope you like, I hope you like what the heck I'm doing. I'm trying to do a new theme each time or something, something to keep it interesting, both for me and for you. Um, I'm going to go out and just, uh, fade out, play out, uh, with a song from, uh, Cat Power. This is from her album Free, uh, from 2003. Um, and this is the song Maybe Not. So, uh, y'all be safe and, uh, take care out there.